Okay, here's example six on the binomial theorem topic. I should point out right away that this is beyond the scope of the advanced higher maths course. Uh, you will not get asked this in an exam. Uh, but it's interesting. It's a really extra extension to what we've been doing, where we're looking at finding a coefficient of a particular term, as we have done in the past, but it's a product of two terms. So we've got an extra level of challenge where we're having to uh, look at products as well. So the way we might tackle this is, uh, in this case here, we've got a product of terms like x plus 2, and then we've got 2x minus 3 cubed. Now, obviously, it's the second term that we're going to have to think about expanding, and then we'll have a look at what happens when we multiply them together. So if we take the second term on its own, 2x minus 3 cubed, uh, we can think of that as we're doing our binomial expansion from r equals 0 to 3 of 3 choose r times 2x to the power of 3 minus r times negative 3 to the power of r. And if we were to expand that fully, if we've got row 3 starts 1, 3, so it's going to be 1, 3, 3, 1 means that we're dealing with, I'm just going to jump straight into the coefficients, so it's going to be 1 multiplied by uh, 2x to the power of 3, plus 3 lots of 2x to the power of 2 times 1 lot of negative 3, plus 3 lots of 2x times negative 3 squared, plus 1 lot of negative 3 cubed. Now, if I, I might as well, while I'm here, we could simplify the whole thing, and that would be 8x cubed, and then we've got a negative sign kicking in for the next one. If you notice, we've got negative 3 uh, times 3 is negative 9. Oh, let's not do it all in one go. So our first and last multipliers there gives us negative 9 times, and we'll just do that, 4x squared separately. Uh, the next term here we've got 9 times 3 is 27 times 2x. And then we've got negative 3 cubed is negative 27. Don't rush it. You know, it'll take as many steps as it takes to get it right. If you try and do too much in one go, that's when you make a mistake. So we could say that our expansion is 8x cubed minus 36x squared uh, plus 54x minus 27. So uh, we're going to take that and multiply it by x plus 2. Now I'm not going to write it all out because I don't need to know the full expansion. Uh, so uh, let's just write out the original question because I've kind of concentrated on a little part of it. So I'm going to write x plus 2 multiplied by 2x minus 3 cubed. Okay. For the x cubed term, is it? Yep. For the x cubed term, we're going to zoom in on a couple of things. We know that, first of all, we would multiply the x by something in this expansion. To get the x cubed term, it's going to have to be something with x squared in it. So we're going to say it's going to be x multiplied by the term in that expansion that we did, which has got an x squared term in it, which is the negative 36 x squared. And that gives a total of negative 36 x cubed. Somewhere else in the expansion, we're going to multiply uh, plus 2, positive 2, by something in the expansion. That's also going to give us an x cubed term. Uh, what is it going to be? Well, it's going to have to be the one that's already an x cubed term because we're only multiplying it by a constant, and that's going to be the 8x cubed, which gives us 16x cubed. So the combined term, when we did multiply all this out, would involve us putting these two together. So the combined x cubed term 
is equal to basically negative 36x cubed plus 16x cubed, which is negative 20x cubed. If we answered the question, find the coefficient of the x cubed term in the expansion. So the coefficient of the x cubed term is negative 20. And that's how we deal with it.